Good morning. I hope you have your uh, favorite cup of ground uh, coffee and uh, are enjoying that. Uh, we recently re re released our annual report and our numbers are great. One thing that did, we did see an increase with, uh, most of them decreases across the board. One thing we did see an increase in, in, in during 2020 was automobile theft. So we asked uh, Amanda from the Arizona Automobile Theft Authority to come and join us and give us tips on, on how we could keep our vehicles safely or safer in Paradise Valley, keep them in our possession. Uh, so with that, we had 14 vehicle thefts in 2020, which is double the cases that were reported in 2019. Uh, that's why we invited Amanda. And so she's gonna present us with some myths and realities of vehicle vehicle thefts. Amanda, it's all yours. Well, thank you. I'm happy to be here. So as the chief said, I am with the Arizona Automobile Theft Authority. We are a, part of a state agency, bigger state agency, the Arizona Department of Insurance and Financial Institutions. So let me go ahead here and with that, I brought a presentation. Um, it's always better to a little bit see a little bit more. So let's go ahead here. And so some of the things here in Arizona, and this has been the standard before COVID and everything, there's about a vehicle stolen every 30 minutes somewhere in Arizona, not necessarily here in Metro Phoenix area. It can be anywhere from Tucson to Flagstaff to St. John's to Yuma, Parker, and all sorts of area. But there's 30, um, that's roughly around 48 vehicles uh, within a day. In 2019, we had about 18,151 vehicles stolen throughout the state. It is actually a slight decrease from the previous year, and we go off of the FBI UCR stats. Our numbers right now, we've pulled for 2020. While Paradise Valley has seen an increase, we're actually seeing a slight decrease for 2020. We don't know yet on how that's going to play out. Um, a lot of people are home, but there's a lot of different things that are happening and a lot of change in auto theft as well. So roughly right now, out of the 11 agencies we pulled, we're looking at roughly slightly being down about 1.07%, which is great as a whole. But if you've ever had your star your car stolen, which I have, it really doesn't mean too much. So I'm gonna still present some more information on you. As a whole, Arizona has done really good. Back in 2002, we were number one. We've battled really hard to get down from number one and move down to 18 where we currently stand. However, as you're well aware, we need to go ahead and continue that battle against auto theft. All of our neighbors that surround Arizona are still up in the top 10. We've got New Mexico at number one, Colorado at number two, California at number six, and that's roughly proportionized by um, how many people are there. So we've got Nevada that beat them at number four. And Utah, they're right along with us. We're battling really good and we're doing really well on combating our auto theft. So as you're probably interested, where are the hot spots right now for auto theft? And again, these are based off of percentage of, of population. Tucson is our hot spot right now. So if you're traveling to Tucson or it's anywhere actually in Arizona and anytime you go, as you'll see later, you want to go ahead and protect your car. Let's see here. Phoenix has done really well. We've moved almost out of the hundred. We're going to go ahead and work and battle that out there and improve everybody else in general. So as you can see, We've increased, so we've got a little bit of work. We're hoping though, we're gonna go ahead and decrease that. So my next slide, we're actually gonna cover what's probably more interested to you. What are our most stolen vehicles? Right now, here are the top 10 most stolen vehicles. One of the things I wanna go ahead and put out to you, they're not our newer vehicles. I know everybody wants to sit there and have that flashy car, but there is something nice about having a paid off car. So if you notice and look at the years on there, we've got a good portion of vehicles that are older, older than 10 years. We've got a few that are older than 20 years old. 
And our number one stolen car is our Chevy full-size trucks. These are your Silverados, your extended cabs, your longer beds, whatever it is. If it's in that Chevy full-size car, full-size truck, you want to go ahead and make sure you layer up your protection on this. This is a hot commodity. So here's something about the myths of there. A big portion of our auto theft is really going to be opportunity. So, you know, running into Starbucks because we've pre-placed our order on our phones um, and then we've left our car running because I'm only gonna be away for a minute. That actually makes it really easy for an opportunity for a car. A running car takes less than five seconds to steal. Whether it's locked or not, whether you've got the key fob or not, we wanna go ahead and make sure that we actually, anytime we are leaving our car, we turn it off completely and lock the doors. We wanna go ahead and make it difficult, make it an effort to steal our car and not just leave it exposed. Our next car, as I showed in my previous slide, is that my car is too old for a thief. Actually, older cars are easier to steal. They don't have the latest and greatest of technology. Um, some of the ceiling has weared, so it's easier to pull back doors and get in, jimmy it in there, or maybe the locks just don't work. Um, after all, if you noticed with your keys, if they start to sit there and round and soften up, that actually happens with the tumblers as well, and they learn to adjust to take that. There's a lot of different things that go in for cars to be stolen, and so we want to go ahead and keep up our technology. Now, <clears throat> I like having a paid off car. So I keep my cars for a while. My biggest recommendation for that is actually to layer up your protection. Don't just lock your car, but also roll up your wheel windows. Use a club or a secondary device. Um, add an alarm. If it doesn't have an alarm or the alarm's not working, make sure it's up there. Maybe invest on resealing those rubber ceilings on the ends of the doors to make it a little more difficult. There's a lot of different things we can do to improve the safety of our older cars. Here's another huge misconception. Cars are only stolen at night. While we definitely see a lot of activity at night, the truth is a car can be stolen anywhere at any time. As I mentioned at the beginning of the slide, a car is stolen in Arizona every 30 min minutes. So that means that they're in the middle of the day when you're at lunch, at the grocery store, at school, at church, there are many different areas that a car can be stolen. And so we have to be vigilant and have good habits all the time, every time when we're sitting there out there parking and driving in our car. The most important thing you can do with your car is make sure you lock it in front of your own home. Believe it or not, we're more likely to have our vehicle stolen in front of our own house than we are driving out and about. And the reason being is we're home. We feel safe. We may leave it unlocked. We may leave things in there thinking that it's just out front who's gonna be there. The truth is we actually wanna go ahead and be more vigilant about our home and keep that safety there. So one of the things I recommend is what we call Park Smart or Park Smart AZ for here in Arizona. And you'll see this hashtag on all of our social media. Good personal safety habits make good car habits. So whether you're driving, walking around, just even in your own front yard, be observant. Notice what's going around, wave to neighbors, wave to people who are just looking your way. I'm not saying that you have to get up and friendly and say, hi, how are you? But I am saying just acknowledge that you've seen them and they've seen you. The truth is a lot of theft is deterred when they feel a thief has been felt that they've been noticed. They don't wanna be seen. So we wanna make it a habit to see everybody. As I mentioned before, be aware of your surroundings. So one of the trends that we're starting to see nationwide, and it's a little hard to track, is carjacking. That means they're coming up to you while your car is running and taking your car from you. If you're aware of your surroundings, you can see someone watching. Again, thieves don't want to be seen before it happens. They want to catch you in surprise. So you want to go ahead and make sure you're observant. When you're at a park, parked at a light, don't mess with your phone. Start looking around, just be aware, see things around you. You're actually gonna notice that you notice a lot more about not just what happens around you, but in your community, new buildings that pop up, maybe a new coffee shop to try out. 
There are a lot of different things and reasons to be aware of your surroundings, but safety is the number one reason. As I mentioned before, cell phones are a huge distraction, both as walking or even just as driving. New laws came out. It's got to be down. It's got to be out of our hands. And we want to go ahead here at the Auto Theft Authority, encourage that. The reason being is that makes you vulnerable. Your attention is not on your surroundings, but on your phone. And it's really easy to get zoned in on our phone. So we want to make sure that we put that phone down, put it away, out of there, so we can keep up our good safety habits. Another one, while we know that auto theft happens in every part of the day, when we're especially at night, we want to park in a well-lit area. And that includes the day. I know that summer's coming and I'm born and raised in Arizona. I know how hot it gets, but we want to park in a well-lit area. We want to park in an area that has high foot traffic, people walking down. As I mentioned before, thieves don't want to be seen. So we want to go ahead and increase the activity around there and make sure that we acknowledge people and we are closer to the door maybe. Just a whole bunch of different efforts that we can do to park there. Now, the number one reason, as I mentioned before, thieves want that low-lying fruit. They want opportunity that's quick and fast. So what we want to do is lock our doors. This is, I can't stress it enough. We're actually seeing studies right now that more than half of the vehicles stolen are actually left unlocked, which means us as owners need to step up our game. So we want to make sure we lock our doors, take our keys and our key fobs. Key fobs are a great technology, but we want to make sure that those stay in our pocket, attached to key rings, attached to somewhere on us at all times. They are keys. And if they're in the car, they can be used. Another thing to do is remove and hide all valuables. Now there's an exception to the rule. There are gonna be an opportunity where you can't take something with you. Conceal it, put it under there, under a sunshade, put it under a sweatshirt, put it in the back of your trunk, put it under something so it's just not there. Again, thieves are looking for quick, easy targets. And if you leave it out on the open, it just identifies as, hey, I've got something cool in here. One of the other things I like to put, I don't know how people are on, on bumper stickers or any stickers, Apple phones, get nice, beautiful Apple iPhone stickers. My recommendation is actually don't put that on your car. That tells everybody that you have Apple products. And Apple products have a great resale value, but it's best not to advertise the things that we have in our car. So those are just one of those things that we have. Last but not least, roll up our windows. The safety of your vehicle is dependent on that window being all the way rolled up. They were designed to be there an impact on there. And I, again, I'm born and raised in Arizona. I know what it means to have your window down and cracked just a little bit. There was that old theory that tint bubbles up on there. Again, if you're more concerned about your car being there, we want to go ahead and roll it up and really, really impact our security on that. That's going to just be another level up on that and make it a little more difficult for a thief to try to break in. Another thing that's come out, if we have any live PD fans, um, is the 9 p.m. routine. And I believe that you guys have your own um, nine o'clock walk. Is that correct? Yep. That's okay. correct. So this is actually a really good time. It is a guideline with that 9 p.m. It's around time people are getting ready for the next day. We wanna go ahead and make sure that we develop good habits. As I mentioned before, good personal safety habits are just good habits for your vehicle. And in this case, your home. Removing valuables, because especially at night, thieves have more time to look a little bit more in depth into our cars. We wanna go ahead and make sure we remove our valuables. This includes weapons. The worst thing you ever want is to have something that you have for your protection taken and used against in a crime or something else. So our cars weren't designed to be weapon safe, uh, lockers. So let's go ahead and remove them from the vehicles at night. As I mentioned before, roll up our windows. We fall into a lull, sense of security and lull at our house. And sometimes we make ourselves more vulnerable there. So we want to, again, just double check it. When you're out there at 9 p.m., we get busy when we run into the house. 
maybe we've got to make dinner, we've got kids, or maybe we've got another jump into a phone call or something. 9 p.m., run back out there, make sure our windows are locked up. This is a really good tip, and I speak from personal advice. When it gets to monsoon season, it avoids getting dust in your car, which is important, and I live from an experience where I didn't have that. Next is lock your door. As I mentioned, it's really easy to say that I live in a safe neighborhood. Crime doesn't happen. Well, the truth is about crime, as I'm sure you all know, is it goes where the opportunities are. If we feel that we are too safe in our neighborhoods and homes and we leave our cars unlocked, our thieves are gonna go and find out. They're gonna go through, check doors and find that, oh, this neighborhood has 15 cars unlocked. This is a great place for me to go and set up my job and they'll go ahead and do that. So we wanna make sure we lock our doors in front of our own house. I mentioned before, use a secondary device. The worst thing we can do is only rely on one piece of technology to protect our car. Locks are great, it's a good start, but it shouldn't be where we stop. So consider using a steering wheel lock like a club, maybe a kill switch if you've got those classic cars. Um, it's really good time for that. Some other sort of technology, look into that. Maybe an aftermarket alarm, maybe even just lights, security lights in front of our own house just something to sit there and increase the security of our vehicle and our belongings. As I mentioned, the 9 p.m. routine is actually really good for not just our car and our vehicle, but also our home. We wanna go ahead and remove those objects that will draw thieves' attention. I've got kids, they leave things everywhere. So having a 9 p.m. routine is a really good time to sit there and stop other theft too. Theft of our personal belongings like bikes, toys, Maybe that package we were expecting from Amazon that got dropped off and we didn't notice. 9 p.m. routine is a good time to double check and make sure we've pulled all of that stuff in. Close the garage door. Or it's kind of spring, it's getting a little warm, maybe clean out the garage and park our vehicles in the garage. We want to make sure that if we can get that extra layer of protection for our car, parking our cars in there, making sure before we go into the house, we close that door. It's another barrier. It's another loop for thieves to try to go ahead and get in past. Closing that door is 100% there. Nobody's gonna question somebody walking up to a garage if it's opened, but if you have it closed, it's gonna make a little noise if somebody's trying to sit there and open it. Um, and again, it's just another door and a barrier for somebody to get to your car or other belongings that you keep in your garage. I can't stress this enough, but lock doors and not just your car doors, lock all of your doors. It's really easy. They're all doors and locks or sets of barriers. And each one that you do is another additional added security. So that garage door between our house and our home, go ahead and lock it. As I mentioned, good car habits are good personal safety habits. If you lock one door, the chances are you're gonna lock all your doors. If you leave one door unlocked, the chances are you're gonna start leaving other locks unlocked. So we wanna make it a habit to lock our doors and we wanna do them with all of our doors. So remember, with auto theft prevention, especially on our vehicles and stuff, we are all our first line of defense for our cars. We're the people who are driving it, we know where we're going and we are with our cars when they're in place or when they're not and we should know where they're at. So again, lock our cars and make sure that you do the best you can to prevent the safety and theft of your vehicle. So I have my information below. Um, is there any questions or comments? We'll give people a little bit of time to submit questions if they have them. I thought the Park Smart AZ, um, the concepts and the tips that were shared were great. Um, something also is when you think of items inside of your car, not just that are valuable, but what other people might perceive as being valuable. I responded to a call for service where there was an empty shoe box in the back of the car and the car had been smashed open and there was nothing inside that shoe box. And so it was perceived that there was value inside there. So whatever people might perceive as value, those are also things to consider uh, removing or hiding inside the vehicle as well. Um, another thought that I had was secondary devices to help increase security of a vehicle. I thought about deterrence 
and one that came to mind was an anti-theft security light that you can put inside of your vehicle. It flashes red during the night and then during the day it has a solar panel on it so it just recharges. So during night it's blinking red as if you've set your alarm even if you've forgotten and people maybe not may not want to open your vehicle um, because they're afraid that the alarm might go off. Deterrents do actually work, and it's just another security layer that you can add to your car. And so, again, that's like an anti-theft security light for your car, and they're relatively cheap. Those are excellent points. Um, one of the other things to remove is any bags. Like you mentioned with the shoebox, any bags from stores, we have a habit of reusing our bags or backpacks. Um, I like to tell our kids and get them incorporated in this because our backpacks, you know, a thief's going to sit there and break into your car, take the backpack and find out later it was someone's homework rather than not a laptop or a Chromebook or um, which even a Chromebook has value on there. It's what they can sell. Um, chargers. It sounds really simple. We want to charge our phones in our car, but even those have a, a two or three dollars. So, I mean, it all adds up and we want to go ahead and make sure that we do remove all of those things. Um, a big portion, again, is also weapons. I can't stress enough that how our vehicles are not lockers for our weapons. Um, if you are going to have that, maybe invest in a locker, which has a key and keep that key with you. We don't want to keep those spare keys at all, or even for another car. Um, I've, we've heard cases where somebody will have a spare key for a car sitting next to it. They've left their car unlocked. And so now that thief drove away with two because the chances are thieves don't work alone. They usually work in crews. We had a couple of questions that were submitted, and one that I have here written is, what happens to these older um, stolen cars and trucks? Are they recovered, stripped for parts, or wind up in Mexico? Just curious. It's various. So there is a huge conception that um, cars go to Mexico, and they do. They are used for drug running. Uh, human smuggling, but we've also had cars recovered as north up as Minnesota and Wisconsin on there. Arizona is a traffic state. We've got a lot of traffic going and they go just not from us, but everywhere in the U.S. Um, our older cars, sometimes they become classics. So we want to, um, they might be stolen for parts. They might be just stolen for a ride. There are a lot of different reasons for why a car is stolen. Um, and it's various. It depends on what that thief is looking for. Maybe they specialize in Nissan Ultimas, or maybe they specialize in a certain one and they switch out the parts because they've damaged it. Or um, our trucks, our trucks are hot in Arizona because for the same reason that we like them, they haul stuff, they make good habits. The other conception is if they're a smart thief, which isn't the case at all. Um, they may think that an older car, no one's gonna assume that somebody's looking for an older car as an auto theft victim. They're gonna look for the new flashier ones. And that's not the case at all. As you can see, our older cars are actually more susceptible. Amanda mentioned a couple of things that I just wanna reiterate to you. One about the older vehicles, you know, um, familiarity uh, we start to lessen our guard. So those 1997 Honda Civics, uh, there's a good possibility the doors are unlocked and the keys are in it. And in Paradise Valley, that is our prime. Uh, the bulk of our auto thefts occur because uh, the keys are in the vehicle, the doors are unlocked. Uh, most of them happen at night when they're parked in your driveway. So uh, just a couple of additional tips on that. Uh, anything else, Amanda? You know, for our vehicles, it's really easy, like I mentioned before, to get in that lull sense of community. On a whole, as you mentioned, Paradise Valley is a great community to live in. It's usually low crime rate. And the best part about having auto theft as your major issue is that it's preventable. It's something that we as a person and citizens can be proactive about in increasing their safety, increasing our theft, um, theft deterrence, you know, lights getting to know your neighbors, waving, um, and locking doors. It sounds so simple, um, but it really is that easy of just increasing that is removing those keys. Um, one of the ones I forgot to mention is valet keys. Valet is a great tool, but make sure you pull those valet keys and treat them just as a regular key. 
Um, they're good to have in the car, but again, it's a key in a car and that can make it drive off. So we wanna go ahead and make sure we remove them. Another question that I have here is, are there any suggestions on keeping registration and insurance in vehicles? There, um, it is part of state law. It is dependent on the officer that pulls you over, but you wanna have that complete information available so that they can see it. Um, if you wanna make it a habit, I've had people who make it a habit and a little folder to pull that out of your car every night. Um, but you do bring up a good point. There's a lot of information on our registration and mail in general. One of the areas that we see a lot of cars stolen um, during the day is mailboxes left running. So again, those are all those things putting in. I would say on a whole is you can black out your address on there, but make sure you have something with it and maybe a picture of it before it was blacked out, um, protected on there. You never wanna be in a position where you're not able to provide the information law enforcement needs. So I'm a I like to have that information available for them, but you can remove your address from there because you'll have it in their driver's license and they can verify it with you. No, that's a great point. I think that if you take a photo of it on your smartphone and then uh, redact your, your address information, most officers are gonna be fine with that uh, combination. Mm -hmm. And then I had another resident um, provide this suggestion that um, vehicles that have the hatchback configuration, that it's always wise to use the retracting cover um, in case you have anything laying in the back, which is great. And I, I have a car and I've put something over there so that way people can't see in the back of my car. Yes, that is an excellent tip. If you don't have that, but we like, as I mentioned before, it's getting close to summer and hot. Uh, be the lazy car owner with the sunshade. Pop open that sunshade, put the one over you need over your steering wheel and throw the other one on the side, whatever you're covering. A thief's not gonna notice that, they're gonna notice the sunshade and maybe think it fell down, hiding something underneath there. Um, so don't just do the blankets, just be creative. The other aspect is, is think of where people would do. Now, again, as I mentioned before, there are exceptions to the rule of everything. There are going to be opportunities where you can't bring something with you. We're always like Dennis going to recommend you to do the best things possible for you. Um, but if you have those exceptions, what are thieves going to see when they look at a driver driver's side looking for things? They're going to look on the passenger side. So maybe put something underneath by your foot pedals and again, cover it. They're expecting to see foot pedals. They're not expecting to see something there. Women, I'm a huge one. If you have purses or men, this applies for gym bags and stuff. Match it to the interior of the car. It makes it more difficult to see those bags when it looks like everything else in the car. All right, Amanda, thanks for joining us this morning. I have a couple of council members I'd like to introduce. Wonderful. Starting with Mayor Bian Wilner, and I'll allow him a couple of minutes to introduce himself and, and uh, Thank you very much, Chief. I'll, I'll make it, how about a couple seconds just to say thank you. Great, keep up the great work on the department. Thank you, Chief and Officer McGee and the entire team. And thank you, Amanda, uh, for joining us. I learned some, some good information today. So it's always, uh, the folks that the PD brings in are always great. And this was uh, right in tune with that. So thank you all. And uh, to those who are watching, it, as the Chief and the department always remind us, it takes all of us engaged in crime prevention to um, keep our community safe. So I, I know that, and Chief, I'm sure will express this and Officer McGee, they're always available and always willing to help with different things. Um, so if there are other questions, I know they're willing to, to do that and the council's here to support their mission to keep our community as safe as possible. So thank you very much and a great meeting. Thanks, Mayor. Council Member Pace. All right, thank you. And a really great job. Nice presentation, nice materials. Um, and remember change in the vehicle too. Don't leave quarters in the middle of the slot. I thought about that because I catch my husband doing that sometimes in our cars. So, um, and I remember the club growing up here too. I used to always have a club on my car and it was very easy to use. And you just got in a habit of that, um, those kind of things and watch keeping things in vehicles 
um, through car washes. You have to remember to pull out guns, pull out key items, pull out ID, extra spare keys. I agree with all of that. So good tips for us, for our residents. And thank you for doing that. And thanks as always to our chief and the police team. We have a great team in Paradise Valley uh, to do these coffee with the cops. And I have to say this morning, a big shout out to our wonderful officer McGee, who was chosen um, to carry the flame of hope as part of the 2022 Special Olympics World Games. We've been talking about this in town. We're so proud um, and so exciting um, to support Special Olympics and to be recognized for all the efforts. So Officer McGee, very wonderful. We're very excited to watch this progress and hear about it and um, help a great cause. So thanks again, Chief and, and, your, all team, and your all team. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Council member Thomason and ACOPS uh, liaison to the council. Welcome. Well, good morning, Chief. Thank you. Um, Amanda, thank you so much for your presentation. You were not only informative, but inspiring. And I can't remember the last time I was really genuinely inspired by a crime prevention talk. So you have the X factor. So I hope you come visit us again. And I certainly learned a lot. And Chief, thank you always. You and your dedication and your crew inspire me and they inspire me in a funny way because when I ever think about doing something that's not safe, I imagine one of your officers coming to my house on a call and me having to stand there and explain that I left windows down or keys in or something in the back and I can just see them giving me the look like Council Member Thomason, really? So it's a matter of community pride and I'm inspired. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And it definitely is a community. That's the only way we can solve any crime problems. Uh, it's a partnership that we have with you. So certainly please uh, continue to take your preventative methods on your nine o'clock walk. Also see out there my town manager, uh, Jill, good to see you this morning. Thank you uh, so much. Sure, thanks for doing this and for the community members for um, zooming in again this. I uh, also see a couple of uh, my advisory committee members that ha we had a late night uh, meeting last night and I'm appreciative to see you again this morning. Uh, Mr. Hawthorne, nice to meet you last night and Jay, it's always good to uh, see you uh, on the advisory committee. So thank you both for coming again this morning. Any other questions that we can answer for the good of the order? I hope we've given you enough time to get a second cup of coffee before you have to hit the road and get to work. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you again remotely uh, next month.